Hey, race fans, I'm on Silent and we're on the air with a mini series. That's not something I say often, but with the hockey season almost over, down to the cup finals, thought it was time that we transition to something new over the summer for just a few episodes. I think you guys could probably, if you're race fans, you have figured out what we're playing already. And if not, that kind of gives it away right there. We are going back all the way to the PlayStation 1 with the original Gran Turismo. So the question is, Steve-O, why are we playing Gran Turismo? Let's see what I did there, a little rhyming action. Uh, no, so what we're doing is I realized at some point, and I got the idea float at me from a few folk, to... Gran Turismo, but I've never actually done any of the endurance races, nor have I done the you know, GT World Championship series. So I thought, you know what, let's just do a little mini series where I do, there's three endurance races, there's one GT World Championship, so over the next couple of months, uh, every other week-ish, with a little Olympic break, because that's also going to be a thing. But uh, we're going to do some, uh, we're going to do some racing. We're going to kick it off with one of the endurance races as well. And you saw, actually, uh, you just saw Special Stage Route 11, which is where we're going to start. And then, uh, sadly, no Trial Mountain. There's, uh, I know there's a GT2 endurance race. I know I've done a bunch of the GT Gran Turismo 2 endurance races, but I haven't done any of the Gran Turismo 1 endurance races. So I'm going to probably... Eventually get to GT2 maybe next summer, but it'll be uh, less complete than it is here. This vi this opening video is always the coolest as a kid growing up watching, doing this. It's long. I mean, not as long as like the PS3 intro videos, mine. Especially was it GT5 that had like a 10 minute intro video? To hide the install time. <laughs> and what a great it's. it's Great game when it was playing, but goddamn, that was poorly optimized to load and install. And here we are. Welcome home for Gran Turismo 1. So we got ourselves, not the GTS, we got ourselves a few race cars that we've won along the way. I've kind of had to go through and unlock everything. Get to through everything but those four events that we was talking about, right? But we've won some neat stuff. We got the Chaser, Toyota Chaser. It's like, looks like a family stand. Le Mans edition. We got, oh, the, yeah, the Dodge Concept car. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking about taking that to the uh, normal car. Yeah, I think I might take that for the normal car race uh, at, uh, or I guess the not race car race at Special Stage Route 11. Uh, it's the right color and everything, too. It's purple. It's perfect. It's like it's a sign. You got this FTO Le Mans Edition. 541, 2100. And you got this slightly more powerful and slightly lighter Honda Del Sol. So for me, it's between, like, I was thinking, yeah, do we do the Chaser or do we do the FTO? And I'm thinking... Because it's got the least power, I'm going to go with the, the FTO Le Mans to take with me to... Uh, the racetrack special event time. Yeah, no, when I said everything else is taken care of, like, there's GT League all one, except for the GT World Cup in this game, sorry. And then you've got the special events. That's the first page done, and the second page is done, except for these three here. And we're gonna start with the, we're gonna start with Roof 11 1. I liked, I was really good at Roof 11 in GT3. I was uh, That was probably my best track in that game. It hasn't quite translated as well to here, though, but we'll see how how this is with my International A license. Let's say I've had to turn off the music for the sake of copyright, so I'll see what we can splicey underneath. But, here we go in the FTO. Nicely held through turn one. Oh yeah, it's endurance race, the rare time 
Ooh. The endurance race, the rare time where in this game where you get to uh, deal with tire temps and tire wear. Ooh. Had that wrangled, unwrangled, wrangled, and then unwrangled again. Oh, right. That's a harder turn than it looks. It sucks you in. There we go. Whew, that was close. I swear that's easier in GT3, because I don't think this one was in GT2. Should have used some brake there instead of lifting off the throttle to rotate it through that turn. And that's what, Hotel Hairpin? Oh, too deep. <laughs> Oops, I should have done more track time with this. Okay, could have taken that one a lot deeper. All right. And then it's what? A chicane? Right, I forgot there's the chicane at the end. For some reason, I thought it was a straight shot right head to the... Oh, well, you look at the ma mini map. Just tagged the wall perfectly to get me back going straight. Not a good lap, but uh, we will make the field at least. So how do we do with a 51.5? We were five seconds faster than everyone else on a shitty lap. Okay. There's like one car that looks like it might be a purpose-built race car, and it's the Impreza, and even then I doubt that considering everything else there. I think we've brought a gun to a knife fight, so to speak. I think we're going to have to rethink this one. Alright, so, if we're going to DIY a car, I already tagged the Dodge. I want to use a Supra for one of the other things, so we're going to take Toyota out of the equation. Hmm, I'm debating between Aston Martin and Chevrolet. Do Aston Martin? DB7? Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> 300 pounds. That's a, that's a meaty vehicle. And that's considerably cheaper as the, uh, there are the two Corvettes. I saved a couple dollars to get the Corvette uh, Coupe. Or Coupe as it should be. Proper Corvette yellow? Yes, let's do it. Sure. What's the worst that could happen, right? Earn enough money, we could tune it up. I don't, uh, I'm trying to remember what Chevy, uh, I guess they don't really have a uh, performance division. Now we got normally aspirated tuning. Well, that's where we're going. 400 horsepower on that. Get the chip, that lad. Wow, nine. I'm hearing that a lot. I'm just gonna, yeah, just get everything. Everything. No. Nope. Engine balancing. Yep. That's, a, that's, that's very cost inefficient. No, we can't. No replacement for displacement. I don't know if I've ever seen a car in this game that actually did that. So 479. Not a lot of horsepower, but that, I don't think we got a turbo that we can get, so. Sometimes you can be shocked, but this ain't one of those times. And we'll just kit it out with the rest of this stuff. And hope for the best. Transmission, just everything. Spend all the money. I'm gonna say somebody... I'm sure Future Steve will have the, uh... All the uh, final cash count that we spent on this thing. That way we know how much I spent on this thing. What's left? I just need to get the uh, suspension. Racing suspension. 
We'll get the solid stabilizers. It's a race car, right? So you gotta spend the money to keep the uh, car from rolling too much. There's a point to roll, but eh, sometimes you don't want the roll. And we will get the uh, racing hard tires. Because this is an endurance race. You want to try and minimize your pit stops. I don't know how many pit stops you'd be targeting for something like this. But I would imagine you're probably looking at like... Uh, I'd like to get a quarter distance before a pit stop, so... I don't know if that's like under... Really under shooting it. So get the uh, red, white, and blue, or the red, white, and blue? I prefer with the white stripe. Yeah, just that red just doesn't work for me. It also looks like it could belong in Trans Am. I was talking about doing Olympic Awful later, so... Uh... 2,100 pounds and 479 horsepower. I think we'd be in with a shot. Going to this again. I got a good feeling about this. All right. Um, just before I do anything. Oh, the God, that's. The six, six seat, six speed gearbox, and it's uh, yeah, that could use some tuning. Okay, I was just gonna. Is there any way we could kind of yank that back in so we're not using it as a giant five speed gearbox? My goodness. How long is sixth gear that it's out past 300 miles an hour? Alright, well, okay, the advantage of being, uh, of being a normally aspirated car is that we don't have to worry about... We don't have to worry about any turbo lag, so... Gets up through the gears nicely, though. Yeah, I might want to shorten, or I'm a little trepidatious, having literally just built this thing. A little squirrely through first gear. Might need to add a little front downforce. Might just have to add a little downforce. In general, because it wants to... The ass end wants to get out under power. Could use a little more turn in. I might actually want to tune... I was going to say, maybe I want to add a little front brake too. Just dial the... Dial a little front down for... Or just dial a little front brake in. Because it wants to get loose under braking. It wants to break loose under power in first gear. Turn in's not spectacular. There we go. Caught the thing in a power slide. This is not be a spectacular lap, but it'll put me back in touch with everyone else, so at least we'll have a competitive race. It's not tuned, but we're not going to sit on the pole, but we'll be close anyway. We'll, under two minutes isn't awful, but and there's some there's a lot of tuning that needs to be done on this thing. Yeah, a lot of tuning needs to be done on this thing. <laughs> All right, it doesn't look promising from here since we're sort of mid-pack in both horsepower and weight, but we've got stick and insanity going for us. 
So, I've done some testing. Got down to about 47s. So, I've got a good feeling. All right. So, 30 laps. So, we're looking. I'm thinking and can hopefully... Not going to get off the line particularly well. We can we'll just get by the hatchback first. And we'll get by this guy into turn one. Well, it's probably turn two, but still. The off-ramp hairpin. Try not to overdrive the car early. Because you want to make sure... I know it's Gran Turismo, no car damage. So you can't lose the race in the first corner, but you can't win it in the first corner either. And the car is a little bit of a handful on cold tires. So we want to minimize the number of pit stops we make. Because I'm not going to... I'm not Scott Dixon. I can't find lap time on cold tires. I can find lap time there. Break at the bridge. Dialed a lot of downforce. Dialed some handling into the suspension. I don't know if I could do this view. I usually drive this view in Gran Turismo. Holy crap, what is going on here? Everyone's just... A lot of struggles into the hotel hairpin there. Double left and bring it on home for this right hairpin here. We're up to P3, so we've got a good first lap considering we were four seconds off the pace and two seconds drift of everyone else after quality. So, on the on ramp, I do not think I've got the car set up as well. Like, this is the best I've got in the on ramp, but we can get them on the straights. So, No, he can't. Gearing sucks. Look at how much horsepower that guy's got. A little collision down into the off-ramp hairpin. Oh, that collision. Kind of got the car sideways, and now we're just kind of hanging out here and forth. We're going to watch these guys beat and bang a bit. We'll get one there. Can we get two into the switchback section here? It's right double left. The, the second of the double left is banked. Helps keep, keep the car in. And then this just dog leg, dog leg left. I'm gonna just get him there. And see if we can't get our march on to first. And GTO kind of threw it up. He likes throwing. He's got a lot of power. He likes throwing it up the inside. I don't have the brakes. Oh, man. I was doing good, and that guy just kind of took me out there. I held it in way too much there. I'm getting the slipstream. Ain't gonna be much slipstream, but it'll be some slipstream. Now we are holding ground. We are holding ground with him thanks to the draft, but. Use the, uh,. Old Gran Turismo trick of use the send of the car off the wall. To try and keep the car straight. I'm pushing too hard now. I'm getting the car sideways. I'm not driving well.
These guys are so much more aggressive under the brakes than I am. I have no, no confidence under the brakes. Whereas these guys all do. Because they got race cars and I got... Trying to get this thing to hook up. Going sideways there. It was not happening now. Unfortunately, what that did was it cost me a lot of time. And that got that goddamn lunatic behind me. And just got me all sorts of out of shape there. I was doing well until just one little drift. Well, we're consistent, if nothing else. Followed that guy in deep. There we go. Took that left better. Keeping up with them twisty bits, we're kind of losing in the straight bits, though. That's the problem. We are down on horsepower considerably to these guys. That was going to be questionable bouncing off the back of them. Around the outside there. Take the long way around. Got a ticket for the long way around. Two bottles of whiskey for the way. I think GTO's got four-wheel drive, right? Actually, I think the cars in front of me both have four-wheel drive, so... They got better low-speed traction than I do. I should've just let him through, because he's just gonna slam into me. I'm gonna repay the favor at some point. Yeah, it just keeps banging me out of the way. I don't know if I glanced the wall there or not. Of course, I've lost time on this lap because... It's hard to make up time when you're just getting battered out of the way. This ain't short track racing. Though if you ask the AI, it is. Now, if I knew what my tire life was, I would try and... Work backwards and find the sequence. We're really good through this first sector. We're pretty good through the second sector. It's that third sector that kills me, right? Hunted up twice in as many corners by this asshole. Gonna make it three for three? No. We need to get off sequence from him and get away from him. I'm gonna Gran Turismo that. Got the Nissan there. That's gonna be four wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for the love of God, I had it going straight and he hits me. Jesus Christ. Whoa! Now that was a glancing blow off the wall. And that purple GTO is really not doing me any favors right now. One sixth race distance in the books. I'm thinking we could probably go between 12 and 15 before the, or 
10 and 15, sorry. I don't know, maybe we can go to between 12 and 15. I think we can do it on two. If we're really lucky, we could do it on one stop. But the more we battle, the less likely we... We are to be able to do it on one stop. I also don't know what these guys have in terms of... Fuck. That was caused by bouncing off the back of them. And because I don't know my tire life, I can't suddenly change strategy. Because if the tire life can, if I can, if I have good tire life for 10 laps, you know, I've got to go for... I can go till lap 10. If I got it for 12 laps, then I should stop now, you know, it's like if I... If I can one-stop it, then I just... Status quo, just keep going. Man, we lost uh, about four seconds there. Now I'm pushing too hard. You can still see him in front, so it's not like we're... Not like we're completely in the weeds. We also have the advantage... ...of not being slowed up by them through there, so... I got the speed, that's for damn sure. It's just I don't have... I got the pace and clean air. That I am actively demonstrating. The problem is... How do I get clean air away from these assholes? I have taken that turn much better every other lap. There we go. Well, we're back to 41s. But we caught back up to second. Last corner notwithstanding. Which just make me kind of wonder. Pretty, uh, I don't want to say I can one-stop this, but I kind of wonder what they're doing for tires. Because there's part of me that thinks I should go off sequence from them. Well, that was close to a spin. I think I should off sequence these guys, but the question is what is off sequence? Alright. 
Uh, it's old station. Get drawn in way too deep by the guy in front. Everyone stays out for another lap. But everyone's getting slower. Because I'm on their tail at doing a 53. Man, that was a big mistake. I'm not even sure what I hit there. That's the, this is where it gets me to wondering, it's like, two-stopper? So it hasn't even started to turn yellow yet. But I feel like the tires are starting to go off. So I'm starting to think two-stopping is going to be the optimal approach. And they were back up to them again already, but still. So the tires are going off, and yet I'm still... Keeping up with them, so it's like, eh, what do I do here? Back down earlier into the final chicane, that's what you do. Into the on ramp. Oh, he's stopping after nine laps, so that's that's purple GTO out of the way. So here's the question. These guys are at least two, maybe three stopping. So purple GTO stops after nine laps. What does the red Nissan do? I wonder if I just do the opposite of them. Well, it's hard to do the opposite of him when you can't see him. Not optimal. That didn't, that was not held well. I'm just going to let him go first. Screw it. Straight in the corner help uh, cancel out any drift. I think I'm just going to take tires here. And to stop it. Yeah, let's... Yeah, I said I was going to do the opposite of him, so we're going to do the opposite of him. Four tires and 18 and a half gallons of Sunoco racing fuel. So, fourth place, or I guess third place, came in behind me. There's the GTO. He got the undercut. Now we got to keep an eye t on the front straight to see 
what the Renaissance pit sequence is going to look like. Hold on to third for a while. Now the question becomes... Can we make a jump? Get second. Nice and smooth out of there. Alright, we're watching that green dot going right along the front straight there. See if it comes to stop it. Just may have. I'm so busy watching that that I'm not watching. Looking on the left, there's a car there. That looks a lot like a Nissan. We've jumped him with an undercut. 53, not bad for an outlap. The cars are the tires are being gentle on the tires. They've still not come up to temperature. So what it really comes down to at this point, there's two important things to question. One, how good's the GTO in clean air? And two, when do I make my final stop? Because I'm being very calm on the car here. I'm trying to be very gentle. If I could stretch this thing an extra... If I could get an extra lap out of the tires and stop at the end of 21 instead of 20, that gives me one lap fresher tires at the finish. And that guy is going to have to try and... He's going to stop, presumably again, on 18. Now the question is, does he stop on 18 and drag the tires three extra laps farther than he has for any other stint, or does he stop at 27? Because if he's three-stopping it, I just gotta chill behind him. I don't gotta do anything stupid. This'll be a good lap. Dipping into the 49s. Taking it nice and calm, trying to... Be very easy on the tires. It's an endurance race, after all. I know they say, like, things like Le Mans and Daytona 24 and IMSA, you know, those things are just really long sprint races. Because you're going full tilt the whole way. But this thing, I think there's a benefit to driving it like it's an endurance race. Classically an endurance race. And though at this point, I swear Formula One has more in common with classic endurance races. Fuel and tire management. Rely on pit stop sequences and, well... I was going to say, DRS is a gimmick that right, more than anything is going to say, but. There we go. Nice through the homeward bound hairpin. Mm. Okay, I've made up time on him there, yeah. Am I worried? No. Getting that slipstream a little bit. Not going to be a lot, but 
Keep it in the 49s. Look at how much faster we're getting down to about 200. Yeah, that was definitely not compensating correctly for the additional speed in the OP slipstream. How are we doing? We are a long ways out from lap traffic. Okay. There we go. Get it straight. So we can apply some power. Somebody running the opposite way. We're underneath the, the pit straight here. I do not want to be in first. I can think of a lot of things that I want right now. But this is not one of them. You know what things I want right now include? Ah. I'm hold. I was gonna say I'm hurting my wrist holding the controller doing that way. Need like a halfway. Need like a half time intermission. <laughs> oh, but I don't want to lose my rhythm either. So. All right. Just change my seating position ever so slightly. So that way we can. I feel like I'm up on the wheel right now. Proverbial wheel. As much as one can be up on the wheel. When you're uh, using controller anyway. So I feel up on top of the microphone. How about that? I feel like I'm talking over it. Trying to get a little closer to my screen. <laughs> Man, I, I feel like, you know, some of us are old and used the old Jimmy Johnson sweary spotter pack when uh, playing NR. But uh, I feel like saying new leader, 96. He's there. Don't get me wrong. We're not out of this yet. But I don't intend to be either. This is the first time where we've gotten some decent wheel spin that's concerned me a little bit. Out of that hairpin in the stint. No one else to gauge off. I, I'm trying to be careful. Also, let's answer one question in case anybody's going to wonder. Steve, why is this video in 30 frames per second? Well, that's because Gran Turismo 1 is a 30 FPS game. Now, it does. Once you've completely beaten arcade mode... It's got, like, the high-fidelity mode. It's like a special stage Route 5. Eight, I don't want to say HD mode, because that would be incorrect, factually, functionally. But it's a higher graphic resolution, or I guess a higher quality graphic, and, uh, and higher frame rate run through special stage Route 5. And at that point, the game will run a full... 60 FPS. That's full relative for TV, right? Especially for a PS1. But for for your standard regular rest of the game racing modes, it runs at 30 FPS. So that is why this is being played in 30 FPS because I think the menus might go 60. But the actual racing is 30, so that's why you're watching this in 30 FPS as opposed to 60, because you're getting the authentic experience. As much as one can on an emulator. Oh, right, emulator. I'm playing it on the Duck Station emulator from the channel Marcus12. Big proponent of this one. It constantly gets updates. I should I thought, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm not. So I've lost my lead. A 
long as I'm careful. I'll let him have the hairpin. A hotel hairpin. One mistake sometimes is all it takes, right? It's a motto of ours for many racing games in the past. But it is not untrue. <laughs> Oops. I was pushing really hard to try and get in the slipstream so I could get him down the straight. Didn't happen, obviously. And lost seven seconds. Ooh. Man, that thing got squirrely. I wonder if I burnt up the tires hitting that divider there. I just got to be careful here. We did that once on the first stint, too. Ah, for fuck's sake! He goes so goddamn slow through there. Anyway, what was I saying about Duck Station last lap? Yeah, it's constantly updated, so... So it's always going to get better. Now I've been passed for third. Shit! My fault. I just got to drive my race here. And see if he stops on the next lap. There's somebody going by underneath us. Now he's sideways and I'm just keeping it under control. I he says as he drifts through turn two, three, all of them. Didn't expect it to power slide in second coming out of there. There we go. That went considerably better this time. It's that sound of the car behind me that scares me. And we got a lapper to deal with. Which held up the GTO treat, so... Now we have to see how we can handle the lapper here. Blue flags! Blue flags! Honestly, what are we doing here? Okay. Up your skyline. I had it under control. He is boxing after an, another nine lap stint, so I assume he's either going to run the tires right to the core. Just wear the tread off the damn thing, such as it is on, you know, slick tire. He's going to wear the tread right off those tires. 
on a 12 lap stint. Which is three laps longer than he's done any other one. Or he's going to stop and do it a three stopper. So, And by the way, we've taken the lead again, but I didn't want to say anything in case I jinxed myself. So I'm not too worried about the GTO. He's going to undercut me. I'm not. I've, I'm fairly confident of that. So I think he's going to get me. Because he'll be on fresh tires. So he's going to be on. You know, nine lap fresh tires than I am. So Nissan behind me, I'm going to assume he's going to stop on 22. So he's going to have eight lap old tires at the finish. So I'm really working to... I'm really working to figure out how to counter the strategy of the Nissan. As I'm fairly confident the GTO is three stopping. There we go. Maybe it's because I've not been battling as much and I've been taking care of the tires considerably better this stint, but I feel like the tires are still much more under me this time after 10 laps than they were last stint after 10 laps. I was close. Just hit my marks, get through this stint unscathed. Just keep it in the middle of the road. There we go little power to get to rotate the car but not so much that you drift it right kind of giving up some time to the Nissan through the hairpins but is what it is gotta be smart So 52-ish. No, oh, 53. Ooh, we are losing some time. Maybe we do want to stop this time out. Uh, I don't think my Nissan friend has stopped this time. I think the tires are starting to go a little yellowish. Until they go full yellow, it's really just, very, eh, it's just a gut feeling. Both the Skyline and I are definitely one. We have one stop left to make. And I feel like I should undercut him. I don't think I want to be on the same sequence as him. I want to have... I want to get those fresh tires on. Let him struggle on, on the old, used, whatever the hell he's on, probably hards. 
I think that's the strategy call. I'm confident I got a good set of tires on me, but still think this is the right call. There he goes, by. FTO's coming by there. Oh man, that's just incredibly slow. Going down, everyone else is doing 180 plus and you're doing 60. Down the pit lane. Which is why three stops is a really questionable strategy call. Because a race, it's total time. You can be as fast as you want. But if you're spending more time slowed down in the pits than everyone else. And then guess what? You're going to be slower over the course of 30 laps than everyone else. And you know what? If, if the Skyline and GTO are battling, that's going to slow them down. So that's good news for me. Because they are through the Hotel Hairpin. And they're through the homeward bound hairpin, heading towards the chicane. And I assume the skyline's going to box here. Sure looks like. There he is, up on the jacks and down and away, but we're gone and down and away as well. So the entire race strategy comes down to that FTO is three stopping, so I just have to keep it clean. It's a really questionable strategy. It is not based on speed. But I think it's the right strategy call. Don't want to turn in too early or too late. He says turning in too early at each of those two following corners from the switchback chicane there. Way too much curb there. Like, the good thing is the FTO, he pushes way too hard. He burns through his tires. And his tires are, what, three laps older than mine. And this is a good one. 48, not bad. I don't think I've dipped into the 47s yet at all. Not in the race, anyway. In testing, yes, but not in the race. Uh, something, something track temp, right? <laughs> It's probably the next thing that's going to show up in Gran Turismo on the PS5 when they do Gran Turismo 7 is uh, 
weather. I, I wonder if they will do weather at any point in Gran Turismo. They really haven't done dynamic weather or anything yet. And it's part of me, you know, plays like, you know, Project Cars be like, yeah, that's great, but it, there's part of me that realizes, no, you really don't like when they do. Like, they just go straight from dry to standing water in the Project Cars games. So. And it's not like they got weather effects in... In iRacing, I know, I know not... I'm not sure iRacing is really the competitor for Gran Turismo so much as... I'd say Forza, but is there anything else on... on you gotta look at what's on the PlayStation thing, right? On the PlayStation ecosystem. But then you gotta ask the question, is, is Gran Turismo really competing with anything but itself at the same time? Can Gran Turismo be its own thing and improve itself and not have to, like, say, okay, the other guys are doing this, so do we have to overhaul our entire philosophy to match? Sort of thing. Oh, there he is. Okay. We're reeling them in. He's just trying to keep the ass end of the car under control. There's Brewer when you need him. But in this situation, it made the car too tight aerodynamically. Doesn't turn real well. So what they're trying to do is get that ass end of the car back down and get it in a situation to where it's not as much drag on it and alleviates downforce on the rear of the car. Andy? As always, thank you, Tim. That is the big change that I did on the car from quality to here was just an ass load of downforce I jacked that rear well, actually I didn't jack, jack that rear spoiler up I dropped the ride height get the car out of the air but I increased all the downforce settings to try and try and get a little more grip through the corners and it's it's helped at the very least it's helped with my confidence brakes still suck you would not mistake this for a Pratt & Miller Corvette. Pratt & Miller makes the uh, Corvette racing cars. And this is a C8R they're up to, I believe. Yeah, they just had uh, a couple weeks back. We had this string of weeks in a row where the uh, one of our big Canadian lotteries, Lotto Max, had a seventy million dollar jackpot, and for whatever reason, it's just that's the cap. It's Lotto Max is it's capped at seventy million dollars. So, you know, could have been considerably higher. Should have been considerably higher. Turned in too early. I thought I was toast there. But yeah. I was having a chat with a... A buddy's dad. About it and uh... And he said to me, you know, Steve. Everyone says, you know, well, what are you going to do if you win 70 million dollars? And you know what I tell him? Whatever I want. And it's like, great philosophy, dude. And the thing that he said he was going to do, first thing he was going to do was buy one of those Corvette, new Corvettes. The C8 Corvette. And I cannot fault him in the slightest for that. It's a nice car. I think I'm just getting a little antsy here. So I'm making mistakes. Don't gotta worry. No pressure from behind. No pressure from behind.
thought I was taking care of the tires. I'm not so sure now. And there he is again. I'm making him time back up. See me if I had one jackpot. First thing I'd have to do is set aside money for my family, otherwise I'd get guilted for the rest of my life. By everyone. But, uh... First thing I would do would be... Buy an Outback. Steve, just an Outback? Yeah, but... I live in the middle of nowhere in northern Ontario. I need a good winter car. And then... Then I can worry about the summer car. But it's winter seven months of the year. And even then, the, other than about maybe three months in the middle of the year where it's summer. You gotta be more worried about your winter fall weather. Winter spring fall. Okay, interesting. Maybe he is going to just tear the carcass off this thing. So, I'm now curious, what is his strategy? we got three laps to go. And we're right on top of him. But... He's going so slow, I'm spinning out. And I'm on fresh rubber, well, fresher rubber. I wonder if he's on the Firestone red alternate tires. Or is that the Firestone white primary tires? Indie car talk. I just recorded a uh, Diablo 2 video in which I talked. We talked about uh, using your tools, so to speak, in Diablo sense. I likened it to Indie car. Weight jackers, engine maps. Stuff and such like that. Even NASCAR's got tools in the car now. Because they've got, uh... There's a track bar on the right side. That you can adjust manually. Now I've gotten by him. I wonder if he... Is he, is he stopping? Yeah, he is. Alright. Zero pressure from behind. There we go. You're going to have to tell me how hectic, how how harrowing this race was from the viewer standpoint. Because from the driver's seat, it was like, once we got through that first pit stop sequence, I was pretty comfortable I was in control. And that FTO came in on the, on lap nine, and I j undercut the uh, Skyline, or sorry, GTO, sorry. FTO is what I want to drive. I'm taking that one careful. Now, once that GTO came in on lap 9, and we undercut the skyline, I was like, yep, no, this one's mine. I had 100% confidence at that point. Now be careful, but don't be too careful or too uncareful. Let's 
There. I'm on the on-ramp there at the homebound hairpin. So, L1, L1. Even backing it down, we're still doing 52s. Not trying to do the sideways thing. Now through the under as the underpass came one last time. All that time, I mean may as well just back it right the hell down. No. We're not Takuma Sato. This is not no attack, no chance mode. Through the hotel hairpin, double left, and then homebound hairpin. I mean, these probably all have real names in the lore of Gran Turismo. But it's much more fun to make up your own names. The on wrap one last time. Do not pit. Bring it on home. Victory in the first of our endurance races. All right. We're going to get the... Uh, oh, yeah. Skyline on two-stop strategy. I'm surprised. The Okay, 13 seconds behind. I was too worried. And, oh, yeah. The GTO is right behind him. The GT2 NSX, I thought that thing was going to be right in the thick of it, and it was just nowhere all day long. I don't know where the hell it was. Like the 5th and 6th place guys. Okay, they were... You know, they were running from the back start. I passed them before we got to turn 1. But it's like, the rest of them, it's just like... Man, that, that NSX, I don't know why it just was so far back. I thought it would be right with everyone else, but it wasn't. Ah, well, GG. New record. 56 minutes. There's your, there's your lap times. Thank you. What was my best lap of the day? That was that 48 coming off the... on the, At the start of the final stint, yeah. We were in traffic at the start, so we never really got any good laps, and I think that's where I kind of tagged the wall a bit at 6. And then everything else was just battling, battling. 10 was a pit stop. And we banged out some 49s in clear air. And then we started getting back into traffic again. 57s caught back up. Stop on 21. And then clear air. And then it was just basically coast mode at that point. So. And even 54 on the last lap because I was not pushing, so. Only 150,000! I thought for sure this would be like a half million dollar race, but oh well. Can we, can we expedite that? Because that's going to take a while. Thank you. <laughs> I think we're good. Well, I didn't intend to last the first challenge. Is this one... Uh, this one's... Oh, there's, there's no info on this one. Okay. I thought... The, these had info, but uh, I guess not. You don't know till you actually enter the race. It must be the uh, GT World Cup where it's half a million dollars to... No, it's $50,000 to win. Maybe it's just maybe it's just the GT2 races that were half a million dollars to win. Whatever. Not sure if we're doing that or if we're going to do uh, Grand Valley next time, but we're doing one of the two. I know that, so... 
So we'll definitely be doing something interesting next time. On Gran Turismo. Are we going to do the Gran Turismo World Cup? Are we going to do the Grand Valley 300? That'd be probably about, what, 50, 60 laps, that one? Now, that one would be an endurance race. I think that one I would actually bring a proper race car for, but I, I'd probably bring a proper race car for this as well, so. All right, we will see you for more Gran Turismo next time. On the Gran Turismo 1 Endurance Series, but until we see you for that, I'm on silent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you're new, share on social media, follow on social media. The social media handle is on silent on air, and that is for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. And don't forget, you can check out more classic racing games in the playlists there on the screen in the description down below, and more videos each time on the channel page. And until the next time, I'm on silent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.